Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive Podcast. We are so glad that you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's Word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm the worship pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we are uh, we believe that God's Word is relevant and helpful for today, which is why we take time to talk about what we talked about on the sermon on Sunday and just uh, different things going on in the world. And there's a lot going on, especially in the country, <laughs> and we could, we'll get into that uh, if I, the conversation goes there. But today I'm being joined by Pastor Michael. Wilson, good to have you here. Glad I'm here. Yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's good to be seen. Uh, it is summertime. Uh, we're mid July here, 2024, and it's and it's warm. It's it's actually it's nice this week. We were just talking how over the Fourth of July it was so hot. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So uh, this past Sunday, well, for those of you listening uh, uh, to the podcast regularly, you know that during the summertime, our church goes through the uh, some portion of the Book of Psalms. Yeah, and so we've been into the Psalms the past handful of weeks, and it's been great. This week, we are uh, in Psalm 138, is what the Sunday message was about. Pastor Wilson was um, uh, with the Baptist Church. We're doing combination services with yes. Neighborhood and... Uh-huh. A Lighthouse of the Living Faith, uh, First Baptist Church here in Los Alamitos. And then I gave the message over in Cyprus, our campus here, and we both were on uh, 138. So those of you listening, take a pause in the broadcast here. Go read 138. 138. It's only eight verses. So <laughs> yeah, real, real short. Yeah, you can get through it. But Mike, what, uh, what were some takeaways that you had from this week? I know I think God is Exalted, I think was your title. God is Exalted. Yeah. And what I... What I, I do every time I do a sermon, yeah, and I try to see before I even get very far into the passage, I, I read it and I think, now, where am I going? Mm-hmm. Where am I going? Yeah, and how am I going to get there? Yeah, and so that's how I develop my outline with that interesting that in mind. Yeah, um, since I have the title already. Mm. Uh, then it then it, it kind of tells me where I'm going. Yeah, so yeah. I like that. Yes, I like that. And I and I write out an introduction, and I can write out a conclusion, and I read those and stuff. But you kind of bookend it, and then yeah, kind of fill in the spaces. Yeah, it's just kind of the way I was, I guess, taught. How yes. To, um, yeah. Uh, I, I realized when I was called by God to ministry that I had to go to school. Yeah, yeah. So I did. And learn the process. I was in the speech team. Yeah. Um, Just, I knew that God was a part of that too. Mm. But it helped me to organize stuff. Yes. And and I went to some sessions uh, with a fellow named Stephen Alford. Okay. Stephen Alford, prince of preachers, Mm. just a great, great organizer. Yeah. So I kind of used that same format that he used nice but i had been already using it ahead of time oh uh, that's great yeah I see where i'm going and yeah. here's how i get there that's not yeah the roadmap and so to exalted speak. you know when god is exalted i have a life's verse mm. and i think everybody ought to have one yeah yeah a verse that they go to time and again and it just so happens that my life's verse is psalm forty six ten, mm. and notice what it says be still and know that I am God. Mm. I will be exalted among the nations. Mm. I will be exalted in all the earth. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and I love the first part of it because instead of, instead of saying be still, it really says cease striving. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So th- this, this particular Psalm just fell right into my lap. I just love it. That's great. I mean, a, that's it feels like perfect in the sense <laughs> excuse me um i i didn't spend too much time belaboring it but i i knew this was a psalm of david mm-hmm. um uh you know it's some interesting uh, background that some of the commentaries pastor justin it, for those of you listening you may have heard us talk about this before justin really puts the skeleton together i yeah. guess of, of the passages like mike you said we get the titles or kind of a general like this is your verses or section yeah. that you're going to hone in on um and he has great resources so i was reading some of his commentaries and i kind of uh, uh, unpacked a, a little bit about okay king david who was he and and wow this is a guy who to your words striving had a lot of stuff yeah. going on 
Yeah, you know, and I'm sure that, you know, and, and he did great things. You know, he did yep. some really positive things, a man after God's own heart, certainly. But also, I'm sure in some of his moments of failure that we certainly know about, maybe even, uh, you know, obviously the, the adultery, murder, yes, you know, that's something, but also some of his conquest, some yeah. of his striving, some of his interpersonal relationship. I'm thinking of Absalom, you know, there's a lot of striving kind of going on. I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm kind of filling in the blanks. Well, it had to be. Yeah, yeah, there had to, I mean, for him to... I mean, that, and that whole relationship between him and Saul yeah. and Absalom, you know, the, the Absalom and David were just yeah. like brothers. Mm. And it was, a, it was a real tough time for them both. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it's... And it, and it is something to take note of, to take a step back and, hey, let me be, I've, the analogy that I used um, in, in uh, my message, uh, uh, Mike McKay, he's always, in, he's a master at object lessons by having, you know, if you've ever seen him preach, he'll have an object or a thing that he'll kind of use to reference. So he's encouraging me to do that. So I used a Rubik's cube, mm. you know, when I'm striving or trying to figure out my life, I'm trying to mess with a Rubik's cube and I can never solve it. Oh, I've never have solved it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, there's some people who like do it in, you know, like 30 seconds flat and it's like, okay, that's, I yeah. do it in 10 years maybe, <laughs> you know, but that's part of that Most striving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're programs. They are, but they're not, you know. <laughs> but there's striving in that, you know, sure but, is. but when are we exulting? When do we set that aside and say, you know what, God, I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to lift you up yeah. for the reasons that because you are the creator, you are the maker. Yeah, the good thing about it is we'll never run out of reasons to exalt God and lift him up. Yeah. It just just doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. And the more we stay at it, the more we realize that. Mm. It's like there's this sea of stuff out there ahead of us that we don't know what it all is, but it but every turn we, we go to it, we exalt, it exalts God. Yeah. Every part of creation exalts God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's really neat that way. Yeah. Like literally, I, I always love the passage, you know, when Jesus is coming in um, uh, to the temple, you know, the Passion mm -hmm. Week, you know, Palm Sunday and, and you know, the, the Pharisees are saying, quiet, quiet the crowd down. This is inappropriate. And Jesus is like, the very rocks are going to cry out, you know. Mm -hmm. and I, um, Alfred Edersheim covers an interesting thing. He talks about the path Jesus was on going into Jerusalem that day. Mm. And he said, at the time of day he was going in, as he came over that final rise, he would have been, like everybody else, blinded by the know. sunlight coming off the golden doors of the temple. Oh, wow. And I just paints a wonderful picture. A vibrant and, and, and that would be the time when the Hosanna, glory to God in the highest, and all of oh, the wow. laying down of the palm leaves. And and that's when Jesus said, If they don't praise me, and the stones yeah. will cry. Out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something but that he paints a picture like that. And it's just really I I've been, I've enjoyed reading some of his stuff. And lot. what was the author? His name is Alfred Edersheim, he 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 wrote a book titled "The Life and Times of Jesus Christ the Messiah," and it's a huge book and, and it's tiny, <laughs> tiny print. <laughs> One of the you know the when you know you're getting a good you know this is going to teach me something here. <laughs> yeah, a little tiny print. I got something better, something to yeah, yeah. load it so I can see it. That's yeah. No, we'll put a link to that on the the show notes so people can check really it good, down. Really good stuff. That's awesome. Well, you said something a moment ago, Mike, that it piqued my interest, and I'm sure people at home might be interested. You said uh, you have a life verse, and that everybody ought to find a life verse. How yeah. how would someone go about doing that? Well, I think you got to read the word, and, and you got to listen to others yeah. uh, as they as the, they preach sermons and teach Bible studies on it. And uh, we had a director of missions uh, in, in our associate, Bab association of Baptist churches here in Orange County, yeah. who said that to me when they said, "What's your life's verse?" Yeah. And I said, "I hadn't thought of that." Yeah, yeah. And he said, "Well, think about it. You ought to have a verse that you can go to when things are rough. You can go to when mm -hmm. you're having difficult times. You can go to when everything's right." Yeah, yeah. Something that, that 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 helps you deal with whatever it is. Yeah. And this one here for me works. I I just there are times I just need to shut up. 
and yeah. Yeah. listen. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the biggest part of prayer, if you were going to break it down in percentages, percentages, it ought to be at least 60, 40, 40 mm. of me and 60 of God. Yeah, yeah. Some people pray and they don't, they don't wait around for an answer. Mm. Yeah, even in the And moment. I know God can reach me sure. on, uh, yeah. while I'm traveling, but uh, I think a t- quiet time with him and just yeah. spending. Uh, some people do not and, and consider this, and, and a lot of church members don't consider this, but the time your pastor spends in prayer is probably the most mm. significant mm. time of his day. Yeah, that's a great call. And, and it's true for everybody. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but especially for us as yeah. pastors that's, and leaders. That's huge. Because, that's that's yeah. productive time. That's not wasted time. Yeah, that's a really good point, you know, and it's and and it, there's a reason why we have our connection. Uh, uh, we do connection cards at uh, Neighborhood Church mm-hmm. at Baptist. I know you guys yeah, have we have a, similar a yeah envelope with stuff on it. Yeah, and that's so important. To, just as a reminder, not only for us for uh, on the pastoral staff, but for everybody listening of. We we don't are, we're not flippant when we say hey write down your prayers or your praises whether it's praises. it's good or yes and, and yeah we want to hear that to either thank God and glorify Him with you mm-hmm. or pray petition on your behalf and yeah and I, that's right on Mike you know that's important that's a part of what we do I, I think one of the best things that ever happened to me was my father in law when I first came in, in the pastorate. Um, while I was still in school, he told me, he said, you go into your study in the morning and nobody bothers you until at least nine o'clock. Mm. And I, I yeah. so my habit for many, many years has been to go, I'd be there about five thirty, six o'clock. And the, my secretary guards my time. Yeah, that's huge. And, and, and I just don't, now, now you, I'm flexible enough. If emergency happens, I'll take care of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, everybody has to understand yeah. that. But I, I share with uh, my congregation that that's my time mm. to be with God. Yeah, and please don't violate. Yeah, yeah. And I try to, you know, you got to say it in a in a loving, caring way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but if they have an emergency, call. I'll, I'll answer. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, and and I, he told me to write down my thoughts mm, in the mm. word, as the word, and that's you know I use that each day as, when I send out a, a more uh, an email every morning to whoever wants them on my list. I've got something like f- over f- almost five thousand mm. of those morning meditations that I. Yeah. Over the years, my kids are going to be able to look at those one day and say, "This is what Dad was thinking there." Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's and that's amazing. Yeah, they kind of track that. A verse of scripture or two, and I yeah. write, and I just deal with it quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just let the Lord speak to my heart, and I write. Sometimes it takes me an hour to do one. Sometimes I do one in ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. So. Man, well, that's yeah, that's really good, and I, and I encourage everyone listening to consider that. You know, to to. Uh, Read scripture, connect with others, listen to others, take quiet time to really discern what that verse might be for you. And as always, you know, when we get to the end of the uh, broadcast, we'll give you the email address. If you have a verse or discovered a verse, let us know. We would love to hear it. Yeah, that's one of the ways we exalt the Lord. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We exalt the Lord. In that process. In that process. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Wilson, what do you make of, uh, you know, the, in this passage, there's, you know, talk of before the other gods, I'll sing your praise, looking forward to day when all the kings will praise, uh, you know, there's there's some kind of maybe future casting here, looking ahead to a time or in the midst. I mentioned kind of like, well, you know, um, when the Jews were released from Egypt in that culture, in that time, there were gods all over the place. When I was thinking of uh, David and Goliath, you know, the uh, Philistines. Okay. The, it, I was looking up, you know, who were their gods, you know, like, and there's all sorts that are mentioned in the Old Testament, you yeah. know, and it's, yeah, that was a thing that, you know, David was intentionally mentioning. Yeah. And I love what David says about it. He says, what, what is wrong with you people? Yeah. You know, this Philistine, who, are you talking about the army of the Lord? Yeah. I'm not talking about just somebody's army. We're talking about God's army. Yeah. Go out there and whip his fan. <laughs> yeah. And he says, okay, mm. and I'll do it. And they tried to put Saul's armor on him. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so and armor it, doesn't it, work. Yeah, yeah. God has armor for us. Yeah. We put his armor. That's that a great point. That he put on us. Yeah. And all the, we don't know what the other stuff four stones were four yeah yeah because he it was just but he picked up the other stones all it but, took was one yeah yeah i don't know maybe he had four brothers <laughs> yeah yeah you have four guards shieldsmen or whatever like yeah man well and that's that's beautiful I, that, <laughs> excuse me that uh out of ephesians 6 the armor of god that's such a um a, a, a beautiful contrast to that yeah. that, that and I, I don't know that i've ever kind of made that connection but that's so beautiful that what an illustration of leaning on mankind's ways of waging mm -hmm. war fighting battle but you know new testament our battles not against flesh and blood, oh. blood but it's in the spirituality yeah powers. yeah and what a, what a good illustration that okay so what what armor ought we wear and to go to that spiritual armor. In fact, somebody called me yesterday and said, look at Ephesians 6, 11. Yeah. And, and President Trump mm. was shot at 6, 11. Well, I, I didn't, wow. I don't know how that plays together, but in this fellow's mind, it, it was significant. Yeah, and that was that time. Obviously... Our president, or the future president, maybe, yeah, wasn't killed. Yeah, but there was a man who was killed. Yes, while he saved his family. Yeah, what How a tragic, what a heroic, but this heroic. Just yeah. an automatic thing to do. And I heard I, I don't know the gentleman's ma name off the top of my head, but I had heard he was a, a fire, fire chief for he was some a volunteer fire. A fire. volunteer fire. Yeah, yeah, I mean that takes bravery yeah. in an earthly sense for sure. But then to guard his family, to cover them, to lay yeah. on top of them, literally. And and at the moment, I'm sure, you know, obviously we know what happened and it was horrific. But who in the moment, it could have been something like, oh, oh this is multiple shooters. You know, who knows, you know, so to lay on top of your family. Probably a quarter inch uh, one, one way. And oh, yeah. Would, and, and For, it would have hit Trump yeah, dead on. It would have been killed. Yeah. So yeah. I remember when John Kennedy was killed. I was in high school. Ooh, yeah, that must have been. I can't imagine for the nation yeah. what that must have felt like. Well, and it's in these times that you know what amazes me is this: a lot of times we hear people saying, "Oh, our prayers are with you," and all this, mm. and, that, and we have a lot of these uh, people who don't believe, say they don't believe in God, yeah, and stuff, and they say, "Well, yeah, we don't want to hear all that." <laughs> yeah, but when something like this happens, yeah, they shut their mouth. Don't they say there's no atheists in foxholes? That's Isn't right. that the, the, for being a military man yourself? That's yeah. Right. Well, I believe that according to Romans chapter one, everybody mm, believes yeah. that there is a God. They just don't want to follow his plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He says That's that without Romans excuse. One, yeah. yeah. So, so they've got to know. And he says yeah, there's something the innate. Creation cries out. Yeah. That there is a God. I was listening to William Lane Craig uh, just briefly the other day. He's a, a, a pretty famous Christian philosopher. Um, oh, man, I'm going to have to look up um, uh, the ontological argument, I think it is. It's some philosophical argument, and we'll link uh, the clip. But it, And it's an interesting uh, uh, argument for the existence of God, you know, and it kind of it clues into when you mention atheists, you know, like it has the idea of, of there is if there is even a possibility of, in Craig's words, a maximally good, maximally trans, uh, uh, um, omnipotent, omniscient, um, above, you know, a, a type of a being, if it's even possible, then, then, um, it's, it's worth your while to make that acceptance, to believe it, if it's even possible, where atheists have to prove the inverse. It is impossible for there to be a being such as that. And, and that's, and, and it's interesting to think about that's the harder task to prove that it is impossible for Oh, being yeah. like you know because all means. yeah i mean we look at the universe again in, in a naturalistic sense and there's things that are jaw-droppingly um beautiful amazing astounding frightening and that probably shouldn't work you know as, as we understand physics <laughs> you know there's yeah. there's things that's like well we're gonna bend the rules for this we gotta bend the rules for that there's this oh, we gotta bend the rules for this so you know it's showing us that there's all these things possible mm -hmm. yeah so anyway just kind of a little aside there 
Yeah, it's it's amazing uh, that um, we could come up with the concept of God, given the fact that you know most of creation is what C.S. Lewis said: empty space at a low temperature. <laughs> And we would not have come up with a god of love, given that picture. Yeah, yeah. And animals eating other animals to su- sustain themselves. And yeah. then you get the mind of man that can contrive all sorts of new ideas mm. and ways of killing people. Yeah, yeah. So god revealed himself to us. Yeah. He had to. We wouldn't yeah. have come up with him on our own. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. This... The gods that mankind comes up with, Throw live people into volcanoes and yeah, kill babies yeah. and yeah, appeasement like and, and animism and, yeah. and those sorts. God's of God's mad and yeah, yeah. You got to appease him. When it's and, and that is interesting. We're again, this is uh, the, our conversation is veering into an interesting, and we'll get back to Psalm one thirty eight. But yeah, I mean, if you look at you know ancient religions around the world, it's so. Um, intertwined with the natural world in a sense of appeasement of survival of the fit or, or you know that that idea of like food and hunting and 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 provision and obviously i mean you know the lord is above it all so there's some sense in that general revelation but i, I think what you're hearkening on to it makes a lot of sense of like yeah there's a lot of humanism is imbued into secular or oh, yeah. pagan religions yeah. where it's kind of like, eh, this is just a vicarious excuse for me to do what I want or for a ruler or king yeah. to be an, an evil human being. And, you know, gosh, again, this is maybe a different day, but reading some of the stuff that the ancient, um, I think it was the Aztecs. Right. I, I know that, that some of those ancient cultures in uh, in middle America were, were more peaceful, where others were horrific. Yeah, uh, child cannibalism, oh, yeah. human sacrifice. And even, you know, I mean, some people say, well, the ancient uh, Spain, Spaniards uh, embellished it. Well, even if, I mean, there's definitely archaeological evidence that there was completely evil and debased well, things that were yeah, happening. And evil is the deal. You know, it, yeah. And, and evil doesn't threaten God, mm. it, but, it, but it can severely corrupt our society. Yeah, point people and, away uh, from him. Yeah. yeah. In fact, it's interesting. One of the verses I used in my as I went through uh, was the verse uh, in, where we're in 1 Kings 18, 27. Oh. And we're... Elijah's up on Mount Carmel. Ah, uh-huh. uh-huh. yes, and, and and he's and he says, "Well, where is your God? <laughs> you know, and cry out loud, or is he either taking and meditating, or is he on busy on a journey? Maybe he's sleeping, or he's, you know, <laughs> yeah, something yeah. like that." He's really goading. Oh, he was. He was really giving it. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's, I think that's great. And that goes yeah. back to circle back to Psalm 138 before the other gods, you know, yeah. I exalt you someday. All the Kings will recognize that they'll put the, whether it's a realization, a humbling or, or a, a, a revelation of God, you know, whatever the, uh, if it's the end times, you know, it, it, I kind of pointed out that that language, as far as I understand, studying the Old Testament, that in my opinion points to the day of the Lord type yeah. of uh, language, you know, yeah. or it's so, so regardless of when it happens, there is uh, a, a point where all will recognize the Lord. Everyone will recognize the Lord. Yeah. Every knee will bow. And yes. Every confess. Yes. You know, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's just where we're headed. Mm. Any other uh, thoughts, Mike, in terms of, um, you know, it was something that I really keyed into is the end of the verse. Um, uh, uh, verse seven and eight, mostly eight, you know, Lord, um, Lord, that your will be over me. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Complete the 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 journey that you have me on. And I kind of hearken that to God's promises. Um, uh, th- that's what we ought to lean on. God's promises enable us to praise, yeah. to, to ask him for these things, to lament when there's laments, but his promises enable us to do that. And he will be faithful to fulfill. Yeah. In fact, he says, he who began a good work in you mm-hmm. will complete it. Mm-hmm. He will complete it. And that's, that's the way it, it works. Well, and that's, and uh, 
something that that I um, also uh, you know kind of brought up you know regarding prayer, you know, in, in in the works that God is doing in us. I know for me in my life, sometimes my prayer might be one way, and I, I you know, and it's not necessarily out of at least a conscious selfishness or or bad intentions, but I find sometimes my prayers, as I read the word more, as I study more, or or just even if it's not directly influenced by something that I can see a clear connection, sometimes God changes my heart or changes my prayer, you know, and if there is, and before we started the podcast, Mike and I were kind of talking about, you know, God answering prayer, you know, and things and and prayer life and stuff like that. And how do you spend time with God? And and that's the thing that, that was kind of an aha moment for me, I guess, in the past of like, oh yeah, it's not, I should be open to God changing my heart for whatever I'm praying for, even if it's a genuine good prayer. Yeah. I should be open to, oh, well, maybe maybe this is the direction you want me to go. Oh, Calvin Miller uh, has written some stuff that is just so good yeah. about getting along with God in prayer. And, mm. and he, uh, he, he has influenced a lot of my thinking, and uh, I, I just, I, I recommend him highly. He's got- Calvin Miller. Calvin Miller. Yeah. He has a- He's 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 at home with the Lord now, okay. but he has written a uh, uh, there's a book out. It's it's probably out of print, but you can still get it if you go to a Christian bookstore or online or something. Yeah, and it's called the Table of Inwardness. Interesting. The Table of Inwardness, and it is just rich. Mm. Just very rich. That's I like the title. That's really interesting. Yeah. Well, Mike, we've been rapping a lot here. This is some good stuff. Um, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting up against our time, but anything else from our passage that you know you, you would be remiss <laughs> to not answer, not not bring up, not chat about? Um, I th- uh, I think um, maybe uh, the purpose of exaltation. I, I looked at three things: yeah, the height of exaltation, the depth of it, and mm. where it goes. But the purpose of it, mm, yeah. and, and, and I say, I say, it points the lost in his direction. Yeah, it it diagnoses man's predicament. Yeah, and it prescribes the only cure. Mm. And I I use John twelve thirty two, Romans two three twenty three, and Romans ten thirteen. Nice to support those. Yeah, and our exalting God. Is pointing other people in his direction. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's huge. Yeah. And sometimes it's big things, sometimes little things. Yeah. Mm. But he alone is yeah. in charge. Yeah. And always will be. Yes. Yeah. And that's the read. That's yeah. yeah. part of his promise is that, yeah, that we can lean and rely on that. Rely on it completely. Mm. Well, I think that's a great place to, to wrap up our talk for today. Thank you, Pastor Wilson. Appreciate you being oh, in here today. Enjoy. I always enjoy coming. Yeah, no, this is always, it's it's fun. And like I said earlier, it's the summertime. So I think Justin is is out of town doing a little family vacation the last yeah, week or two. Back Saturday. Yeah. Pastor McKay, who's been in and out this, uh, this, uh, the summertime, you know, he was, he did Hume Lake, you know, so we've all kind of been shuffling around and everything. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You had some things going on and travel. I know you're traveling for some funerals and yeah. yeah and some things like that. So it's always a pleasure to have you here. And it's always a pleasure for those of you listening. It's a pleasure for you guys to join us. Um, as you probably know, you can go on to YouTube, Neighborhood Church uh, uh, of Cyprus. You can look that up on YouTube and you can check out our uh, Sunday service here. Also on YouTube, A Lighthouse of Living Faith. You can go and see Pastor Mike's message there. We'll have links to those in our show notes. You can also find us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, under those same handles. Also, Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos, if you're looking for that. Uh, Like I said earlier in the broadcast, we love hearing from you guys. If you found a life verse or if you have a life verse already, please email us at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. We would love to hear what those verses are and just be encouraged or any questions or, or thoughts that you guys have. We would love to hear that. Well, until next time, we pray that God would revive your soul.